That Constitution is as fundamental as God's law. It has God's law in it. It's based on the law of God. And it is your document to the government. It's your law to them. It's not their law to you. That don't apply to you. It applies to them. So whenever you think your rights come from the Constitution, get on your knees and ask God and thank Him for giving you your rights because the Constitution didn't give them to you. The Constitution said they come from God, they're fundamental, and they have to be protected. You cannot touch them. Had it not been for George Mason, we would not have had that Bill of Rights. But he told George Washington, I would rather sever my right arm than to set my hand to that document without a Bill of Rights protecting the people. I hope you are inspired enough to set your hand to this document. And then we will put it together. And I'll be there with you. Thank you. Does anybody have a question? Hey, when you were talking about um, the political parties, when you saw how you come over a political party, they have control of you, but and they can eat things out. What kind of things do you mean by that? Well, they put people, as we know, in positions. They plant them. We call them plants to control and manipulate these things. Uh, the political parties are controlled. This guy said a while ago, I, I don't know if you noticed on this video, he said that the, it's, one, it's a one-party one, it's a one system with two factions. George Washington warned us about that. He said the political parties, too, will rise up and control when they're really all the same. There will be no difference. They will control everything until freedom is totally lost. That's what the two parties are doing. You're being deceived, you're being misled with false and, and misleading information. So that's what I mean by that. I guess the example could be the fact that it's almost like you don't even use primaries anymore because the party, uh, the state committees will endorse candidates, their candidate that they want to see before the primary. And, you ever and they ask? only fund those candidates. They, have, won't, they won't allow funding for any other candidate right. that they're not endorsing. Have you ever asked yourself, where they decide, how they decide and how they come by endorsing a political candidate? Uh, yeah, but I don't know. Right. I don't know. Who does? I Who does? Know. No, I don't know anybody that does. No. But all of a sudden, it seems, wow. it's, yeah, it seems that a particular wow. candidate is being endorsed by the parties, and the money goes to them. Mm -hmm. But here's something else: when you go to vote, don't vote on the machine. Paper ballot. You don't have to. Paper ballot. Demand a provisional ballot. That's it. Just tell them point blank: I'm not voting on that machine. I want a provisional ballot, I want a paper trail for my vote. I want to know that my vote counted for who I cast it for. You don't have to use the machine. You definitely can use a provisional ballot. I do it. Okay, now, for instance, I want to do what you did with the affidavit. I will provide, there will be an affidavit on the website. You can go on there and you can look at all the different things. We're having drop-down menus and you can look at what's on there. And, and the affidavit will be on there, among others. For voting. Yeah, yeah for, for rescinding your voter registration and demanding your right to vote. Okay. The, the document that I did myself will be on there. Okay. But you can, I, I recommend that you notarize that document. Have someone notarize it. There's some people that are notarized for free this kind of stuff. Okay? I don't know if any of you guys know Mabel Mazza. Mabel has worked with us for a long time. She did mine. Okay? They're attacking her now, trying to take away her notary from her, and I'm defending her for it. So I think probably the lady from the Department of State, Jackie, do um, you remember her last name, honey? Jackie something or other? I think she's going to wind up in, in serious trouble after the letter that I just crafted for Mabel today. <laughs> so. Now, is there a way for me to deregister? Yes, that affidavit does it. Oh, the affidavit does yes. it. Yes, yes. And, and then they have to put you on the list so that in November you can vote. But then again, you know, every time that I voted for president, I voted for Ron Paul. When Ron Paul wasn't running, I voted for myself. So, you know, you don't, I mean, people say, well, I've had people tell me, well, you're just wasting your vote. You vote for, even if you vote for Ron Paul, you're wasting your vote. Really? I'm voting my conscience. I can go to sleep at night knowing, knowing that I voted for an honorable man, a statesman, not a politician. I know Ron Paul. I met, his, I met Rand Paul's uh, wife and daughter 
and uh, actually put my arms around them. They didn't know who I was. And I come up behind them and hugged them both and walked with them for a few minutes and talked to them. Pastor John Pastoris was with me, and uh, we had fun. They, they actually invited us to go have dinner with them. But uh, I, we were, I, I, I felt it inappropriate and declined, but told them I'd take a rain check on that because I'd love to go and sit down with them and Rand Paul because I think Rand Paul is going to be a presidential candidate in 16. And, and I look forward to it. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Hagan, you brought up Rand Paul, and it's noted that he voted for the National Defense Authorization Act. Lost a lot of uh, support <coughs> by doing that. Is there a tank okay, let me, let me ask, okay, okay, I, I, will, I will defend him in this manner. He may have done that, I don't know. But let me ask you, how many things did Obama vote for that you disagree with? How many things uh, did George Bush vote for that you disagree with? You know, are we vote? I mean, are we really voting for the lesser of two evils, or maybe many evils? Who do you know that you would be willing to cast your vote for? Uh, in, in this case, I, I would still vote for Ron Paul. I'm sure Ron Paul had done things that I could find that I, that I would disagree with. But if I've got if I've got no other choices, who do I vote for? Do I want this nation returned? Do I want the president? Do I want the do I want the War Powers Act rescinded so that we go back to a peacetime constitutional government? Or do I want to continue with a, a, a corporate government from the top down? Because you know that all the governments are corporations. Rand Paul, I believe, will follow his father's footsteps. He may have done that. I don't know if he did or not. But I'd like to ask him personally, face to face, why he did it, if he did, in fact. So. To, to criticize the man without knowing the facts, I would be careful about doing that because you might be shooting yourself, your own self in the foot. I don't know. But I'll tell you this. I'll tell you something I did do. I, I, I neglected to mention this. Let me, I'll get to you in a second. Let me mention this. I called NCCS, National Center for Constitutional Studies, this past week. I hadn't talked to them in probably five or six months. Um, the reason I talked to them is because I'm out of books. And I'm doing a class on November 29th, or not November, June 29th, in Venango County, in, in the little town of Stoneboro. I don't have the address yet, but if you want to go to that class, you want to attend that class, I encourage you to do it. I think there's going to be about a $10 fee or something like that to the guy who's hosting the, the event. Um, but when I talked to NCCS about this, and I, I mentioned that because it's connected with NCCS. I ordered the books for that class, so I would have the Making of America, the 5,000 Year Leap in Constitutions, and so forth for that class. But um, I asked them about the Constitution that they put out, and I think Gary has some of them here, and well, there's one laying right there. And uh, I said to him, I said, it came to my attention several years ago, and I still wonder. Is the 13th Amendment really eliminated out of this? They got the, co the exact copy from Washington, D.C. is what this is in the archives. But as we know, in 1812, the British burnt the archives for this country. They attacked this nation for that purpose to do that. And you ask yourself why? Well, NCCS had received a certified copy of the, the laws of Virginia that had the original Constitution in it. The 1787 Constitution, not this one. And the 13th Amendment did not allow any lawyer, for example, anyone who held a, a title of nobility, meaning Esquire, or any other person who received a, a present gift, a monument of any sort from any uh, potentate or foreign nation to hold an office of government of public trust. That certified document has that 13th Amendment in it. This doesn't. It's not in here. For the most part, it's the same as this one except for that. And that was 1819 when that document was recorded in the Sam Houston Library in Texas. I am going to Texas when I go back to Florida. 
to look at that document, document with my own eyes. And I will bring back another certified copy that I have seen. I have seen the document. I'm going to have them certified the same as this gentleman did. But NCCS sent me that. Being certified and having their official stamp on it from the library gives me confidence that it's worth my trip over there. So that, that prohibits attorneys from holding the Yes. Office, yes. Now, Sorry. the Bar Association told me, the chairman of the, of the, United, uh, the National Bar Association, told me when I, I called him a few years back. He said, Mr. Smith, the Bar Association signed a treaty with the United Nations, which was not the United Nations at that time. It's called something else. League of Nations? Or? Le I think it was League of Nations. That they would do everything in their power to change America fundamentally, the United States. That they would abolish common law. Okay, now where did the Bar Association get authority to make a treaty with anybody pertaining to the laws of this nation? He said, we ab abolished common law. And I said, you mean you got rid of God? We're worshiping Him for nothing? Well, I didn't say that. I said, yes, you did. Because you obviously don't know what common law is. I have met one attorney who happened to help uh, Melina and... What was that other girl's name? And Blonde? Peggy. 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 The old gentleman helped them. He's a retired attorney. He knew what common law was. He's the only attorney I've, had, I've met yet who could accurately describe common law to me. And I was floored. I was totally surprised that he could do that. But he represented them for nothing. For more. So. Who's the person that told you that, uh, about the UN and the Bar Association? That was the president of the National Bar Association. Bar Association. Yeah. You got a question? Yeah. Uh, could you give some examples of what um, offenses would be appropriate uh, to start with a grand jury. So when I talk to people about, if I try to recruit people, I can give examples of what we would be working, what would be working. I actually already have. Uh, <clears throat> I, I didn't point it out, you may not recognize me. Ben, or, uh, uh, William Penn gave Pennsylvania to the people. A commonwealth means owned by the people. A state is a corporation, okay? William Penn wrote a session of laws for the people to live by when he gave the land to the people. It was given to him by the King of England because the king owed his father a tremendous debt. So he gave Pennsylvania, which was much larger than it is now at the time, part of New Jersey and others. He gave that land to him. He gave it to the people. But he, in public law number 59, which is still on the books and, and in the archives, he said any man who puts a tax on the land of the people will be considered public en enemy number one. So the property taxes makes them a public enemy. It's a crime. I don't know of a better example than that one because who likes the property taxes? The public schools are controlled by the government. They're teaching our kids absolutely false things. Some of you know about it. Okay? And if you try to confront them, they just snub you. We're teaching this and we don't care if you like it or not. They'll make fun of you too. Well, they try to. Propaganda is the best tool they have. And people are so mind conditioned, they accept it. Anybody else? All right, well, thank you very much, and I hope you will put your name in this document, and let's get it done. Already on. Hmm? Already on. All right. From the first time. Yeah. And Gary, Gary is the coordinator for the Common Law Grand Jury for Allegheny County, and Jim Barr is working with him. So I'm looking forward to getting this done, because this will go farther than anything we can do to restore this nation. I have a question, Andy. Uh, when William Penn gave the land to the people of Pennsylvania, 1683, with the stipulation that they follow his laws that he gave with the property, they 
Can they be inconsistent with the with the U.S. Constitution? Though it was long before the U.S. Constitution, 1683. Remember, okay. the U.S. Constitution was 1787. But then look what Pennsylvania did. For example, they changed the 1776 Constitution for Pennsylvania in 1789 without without lawful authority to do so, and they admit it. They totally changed it. Wrote a new one. Wrote out the protections of the people and began to write again protections for themselves. You see, all the way back to the very beginning, we've had problems with allowing people to be dumbed down and, to, and allowing the, the public officials to do things without consequence. I mean, look today, they, they set their pay scales, they set their retirements, they do all these things. Who knows how, how much other grafting gratuities they get? And we do nothing. We stand by and say, oh, well, you can't fight City Hall. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can fight City Hall. And I do, and I win. They back off. You hold more power in your hands than you know. Basically, we are the masters. We are. Not basically, we are their okay. masters. You're right. You're right. Not basically. We're we need to start up. acting like masters, not like servants. That's our problem. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't think no, it was no, playing. No, he wanted to get his TV. He's worked out of red. He's got a flat screen TV in the back. That's the area about it because he set it up. Yeah. I forgot yeah, how to right. do this. Yeah, we need that too. We need that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Garrett. We need you here.